Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this tutorial, I want to cover the essential elements of Lightroom Classic in less than 15 minutes. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Sir Germany. I'm a French photographer from the amazing, the incredible city of Paris, France. But I live in Los Angeles, California. In this less than 15 minutes tutorial, I want to cover all the basics of Lightroom Classic. Here it is. So here is Lightroom Classic open. There is no photo. I have got an SD card in my iMac. I'm just going to go to my menu. I'm going to go to File, Import Photos and Videos, and I'm going to go to my SD card. Here is my SD card. It's called Untitled. I'm doing a workshop in Los Angeles, and that's the photo from the last two days. So on the left side is all your device, so all my hard drive and my SD card, all the photo of that SD card, and where I want to put it. In this case, I have a whole file structure here and I'm going to put it into my Drobo drive and I've already created a folder called July 2018 which is there. But let's say you wanted to put it something somewhere else. I could, you know, I could go to my internal drive, my kitchen HD user, I could put it on my desktop, you know, wherever you choose your destination. I already choose that destination. And uh, one thing which is really important is make sure you use embedded in sidecar when you import. It's going to be so much easier afterwards, and you will see why in a second. That's basically it. DNG format is smaller files, uh, more compatible files. That's why I use copy as DNG. And let's go. So that's going to take the files from the SD card, put it into that folder that I, you know, that I that I choose, and convert it into a DNG format. See, now it's importing and converting at the same time. Now, the reason I said you must use Sidecar is because while it's importing, now that you've used Sidecar, uh, in the library module, you can go through your photos really fast because they have an embedded preview, meaning it's just like a small JPEG so you can appreciate the photo. And you can actually see here, it says embedded preview. And in the background, it's going to convert that embedded preview into an actual RAW file. But for now, I can just go through at the light speed my photos and decide which one I want to retouch. So what I usually do is I go through and I give a one star to a photo which I think has potential. Okay, so this is an HDR that I shot. Normal exposure, underexposure, overexposure. And I can go through and decide which one I'm going to retouch. This is the group photo that we did yesterday. That's a, a kind of a cool photo. Okay, this one, this is an HDR. I'm going to give it a one. And I can go through like this, look at the light speed and decide which one I want to retouch, which one I don't want to retouch while it's importing. And it's much faster if you use the sidecar. So I'm just going to go through my photos and give a one star to the one that I think I want to retouch. And you see, while I'm picking up the photo that I want with the one star, up here it is converting in the background as a DNG, which is really cool. So I had an amazing sunset a couple of days ago in Griffiths Park, and it's difficult to choose which one I want. I'm just going to go through and give a one star to the one that I really like. So I have gone through all my photos. I've given a one star to the one I like, and I'm going to filter them now with a star, so only the one star photo are there. I'm just going to show you a few of the magical development that uh, Lightroom can do. So I'm going to take this one, I'm going to start with this one. It's a beautiful photo of the uh, Griffiths Park with downtown. So on this one, I'm going to open up the shadows, I'm going to bring down the highlights, I'm going to hold the Option key or the Alt key on my keyboard and set my black point. So black point means everything you see here in blue or magenta is going to be pure black, just completely black. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing with the, holding the Option key, and I want to go to the limit. Yeah, I want to have a little bit of this uh, Highlight City overblown, uh, a, a bit burn, and that's already good. Maybe add a bit of contrast. On this one, I think I'm just going to boost the exposure and add a bit of clarity to make the city pop. And I think I want to make it as a pano, so I'm going to take the Cropping tool, and I'm going to go to 16 by 9, and I'm going to decide my cropping. Boom. You see we have an airplane here, so I'm going to take the Spot tool. Very easy, you just make it big or small and you brush over something like this. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. It's going to take this texture and put it over. And I think it did a great job here. I don't think anything is visible. And basically, voila, you can go to the tone curve and maybe I can change the tone curve, make, you know, make it even brighter. So it's like an adjustment that you do on top of this basic adjustment. And... Um, I can add a bit of vibrance, 
and saturation or take it out if I want to. Vibrant is basically going to make some of the photo more vivid and saturation is going to do that on the gradient. One thing I can do also, which is really cool, is I can play with the individual colors. This is the U, so I can actually look, for example, there's a lot of blue there, and I can change my blue to make them more green or more, or more magenta, which I might do in this case a little bit. I think it looks nicer. Or you can go to saturation, and for example, I can make my reds, which you see there's a bit of red, I can make them more saturated or not. And luminance. Luminance is the idea you can make a, a, a color like the sky here, for example. And if you don't know what a color is, you can take this tool and I can click here on the sky, I can drag down to make the sky darker or brighter because it's going to detect that color and make it brighter or darker. Okay, the last one I want to show you is split toning, which is really cool. You can add in the highlights some colors and in the, in the shadow some colors. So for example, I can click here on the highlights and add some maybe some sort of uh, warm color in the highlights and in the shadows I can add some green or some blue just to you know make it a little more Hollywood uh, that's the classic Hollywood look voila sharpening I'm gonna make it very simple for you I have a formula you zoom at 100% uh, this one was shot at 100 ISO so I usually put 10 of sharpening if it was shot at 100 ISO at about 90 of sharpening and then I use my masking tool holding the option key and uh, I go to the right, and masking basically means that anything which is black is not going to get sharpened. You don't want to sharpen the sky. You on, only want to sharpen when there is details. And now we got a good sharpened photo of the Griffiths Park. I think a little, it's a little, still a little uh, dark. So maybe I can use the curve to just boost a little bit the brightness. And, you know, I can use also my local tools here. I can say, okay, well, it's bright, but the sky is too bright now. So I can go to my gradient tool click and drag okay and then I go to exposure which is here and then lower the exposure and now it's gonna make that sky just a little darker okay cool so that was one example of retouching I'm gonna give you all the source files this files I'm retouching you will find the link below this video so you can play around with them you can even use them and post them on social media as long as you tag me at photo search you're fine to use the files okay now let's do an HDR beautiful sunset in uh, Griffiths Park yesterday or no the day before I'm gonna select all three photo I'm gonna right click I'm gonna to go to photo merge HDR and in HDR basically we're gonna take the three exposure that was taken by a bracket that's an option you have on your camera to bracket the photos and I'm gonna make it into one super roll file okay let's go over some options here auto align yes auto settings no I want to retouch the photo myself deghosting is basically gonna make it in a way so that if your photos have like some leaf that move from one to another it's gonna try to correct that in this case when you click on show deghost overlay nothing is in red it's in red so I'm not even gonna use it I'm gonna click on merge okay so here is the HDR and now I'm ready to retouch it so on this one I'm gonna same thing open up the shadows I'm gonna bring on the highlights I'm going to do my black point. I showed you my white point. I'm going fast because I got to do this fast. And I'm going to do maybe a little minus clarity. I think I want to crop this. Again, I love using 16 by 9 cropping factor, maybe something like this. Okay. I want to make my scar da darker. So I'm going to make a gradient like I showed you. I'm going to lower the exposure. Not that much. Maybe add a bit of blue. You can, anything which is here, you can add. In the process maybe add a bit of contrast to the overall photo add a bit of uh, um, basically a little bit of uh, yeah vibrance and saturation uh, oh no that's way too much way too much I'm gonna go to uh, the sh maybe shade for the white balance to make it warmer and add even more magenta because I want to go crazy on this and then I think I'm gonna lower the overall exposure of the photo and you know I would probably spend more time but that's a general idea I think I'm going to lower even more the clarity because I don't want to have any hollows in the photo and that usually comes from clarity great sunset okay next we're going to do a panorama I'm going to select all these photos I'm going to go to right click photo merge panorama I'm going to choose the projection which is basically the way it stitches spherical is a little a squeeze for me I think cinematron will work best and I know perspective is not going to work on this one because I was too wide angle I'm going to use the boundary wrap to uh, take care of everything uh, maybe not that much I don't want to a little bit maybe you can do the auto crop yeah and a bit of boundary wrap to get a little bit more sky you just play around with these two settings until you have what you you have what you like merge so here is the panorama 
I'm going to go and I'm going to open the shadows. I'm going to push the whites, okay, until it's bright enough. I'm going to do a little bit of blacks, uh, maybe bring down the highlights a little bit, boost the overall exposure, and uh, let me crop it. I'm going to crop it. I'm, I don't need all that. I don't need all that. I don't need all that. And I don't need all that. Just really want to get uh, the best exposure possible. A white balance, I think I'm going to go to shade. Yeah, and add a little bit of magenta. Maybe add a little bit of clarity to make it this whole thing pop. Uh, right. I don't, I'm not going to add vibrance. On this one, the buildings are not so straight. So you can go to the... I'm going to remove chromatic aberration on the bio profile correction. And that's going to make it even better. Okay, so this one, I want to make it straight. So uh, I'm not going to go to auto. I know it doesn't work. I'm going to go to guided. And I'm going to make one line here that's going to follow exactly that building. And then one line here that follows exactly that lamp. And that's going to help make everything more straight. That's good. Now, I think the sky is too bright. So I'm going to use the adjustment, the gradient here like we did before, I'm just going to lower the gradient a lot. But you see now it's it's going over the building. So you have a new option called Rain Match Off. And I can go here and just move this to the right. And now my gradient is going to go sort of behind the building. You can see here the before, the gradient, and the after. It does not influence as much as the building, but it still closes the photo, which is really cool. I can also take a little brush, same thing. I'm, I can boost some exposure and I can just brush on some of the highlights here of the Walt Disney Concert Hall to make it more shiny and interesting. I usually overdo it at first, uh, and then I just lower the value, usually under 0 0.5, where it looks more natural. Okay, I'm happy with this one. I probably would erase these people in Photoshop, but that's another video. I'm going to give it a two-star. By the way, I did not give a two-star to the uh, other photo we retouched. Let me refilter by one star. So. This one we retouch two star, this one we retouch two star. So I'm gonna filter it down by two star and we only have the retouched one. I want to make a collection out of these photos because I really like them. So I'm gonna go all the way here down to collection. I'm gonna click on plus, create a collection, uh, best workshop 2018, include selected photos. And uh, voila, I can create that. And now let's say I wanna post them on social media so I can just right click, export, I come to the export window and I'm going to select where I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it, for example, on the desktop. So here. All right. I want to, I don't want to give, yeah, maybe let's give them a custom name. I'm going to call them uh, Los Angeles. So they will change the name as they export Los Angeles 1, 2, and 3. JPEG is good. And, you know, for social media, I usually resize to fit the long edge at 2,500 pixel export. Here on my desktop, and here is the three files ready to be posted on social media. Voila, that's the power of Lightroom. All right, guys, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel so you can get more of these type of videos. Don't forget to download the source file. The link is right under the video. And have fun playing with my photos. And I will see you in another video. Mesdames et messieurs, au revoir.